Hello everyone, welcome to the Ginger Snaps here. My name is Steven. Today we're going to be continuing our Part 5 series review with Friday the 13th, Part 5, A New Beginning. Oh, shit. Where to begin? Wow, don't you sound so excited to do my film. I'm not really excited, to be truthfully honest with you. Also, yes, uh, this is... The great value version of Jason, everybody. How are you doing today? Well, I'm so glad you happened to ask. I mean, I've been doing very... Wow, sounds wonderful. I really don't fucking care. Well, that's not very nice. So after Paramount pretty much was done with Friday the 13th, uh, they were really dead set on Friday the 13th pretty much being done, and then all of a sudden, Part 4 made so much fucking money that they decided to make Part 5. Which was uh, a clean slate on a certain character. And uh, this movie is highly regarded as one of the worst ones in the series. Why is that? Well, that's why I'm doing a review on it. So here we are. Let's talk about Friday the 13th Part 5, A New Beginning. This movie begins with Corey Feldman walking through the woods in the rain. And sure enough, he's actually f looking for Jason's grave. So are two other dipshits, and uh, they open up his grave, and he kills them. He kills the two of them. And then uh, Jason gets up, he sees Corey Feldman just sitting in the bushes, and he walks up to him with his machete, he's about to strike, and then next thing you know, what's the best way to open any movie that's not called Nightmare on Elm Street? A dream! Fast forward to Tommy Jarvis as an adult. I know they say he's a teenager, but he definitely looks like he's fucking in his 20s. I want to say 25, pushing 26. Yeah, he's going to Pinehurst. He's going to a mental institution. Well, actually, it's a rehabilitation center because he just came from the mental institution after the events of Part 4, where he is going to try and get back to normal society. And, of course, shit just goes fucking sour for him from there on. Cops show up with a bunch of teenagers, uh, two of them at least, who were caught fucking near the uh, property of Ethel and Junior, a bunch of hillbilly people, and they are kind of the funniest characters in the whole movie. I want to say Ethel is actually the most funniest. I mean, I've never heard anyone speak or swear in such a way that she does. Uh, she, you really get it with her. I mean, she, you know, when she says fuck, she really emphasizes that fuck. Like when she looks at Junior and says, would you shut the fuck up? You know, like, I like her character, but I already know for a fact, a lot of these characters you're going to want to get used to, don't bother because they're just here for a body count. Who are the other kids in this development center? Well, we have Reggie the Reckless, who we first see introduced early in the movie when Tommy Jarvis goes into his room, getting scared by a rubber spider on a string. Yeah, he's a scared cat. Um, then we see Pam, one of the directors of this whole place um matthew as well one of the directors of this whole place uh then we meet uh, a bunch of nobodies who we already know are just gonna get killed in this fucking movie oh man i you know obviously tell i really really like this film i really fucking do Okay, what is so wrong with my movie? I mean, like, hell, you haven't even gone through, like, what, 15 minutes of the movie, and you sound like you fucking hate it. Like, what do you hate about this movie? What do I like about this film? Okay, well, like I said, let me get through the review, Roy, and I'll tell you why. But, I mean, saying your name, Roy, is one of the reasons. We see Robin and Violet in the yard hanging laundry. Also, across from there, we see Vic chopping wood. And out comes Joey, eating a chocolate bar while having three stuffed in his pockets. He wants to go help the girls. They don't want him to help. He gets his chocolate-covered fingers all over their goddamn clean clothes. And then next thing you know, yeah, he pisses them off. And then he goes to Vic and try to ask if he wants to help him. And, you know, offers him a chocolate bar as a peace treaty, I guess. And then next thing you know, no, he doesn't want a chocolate bar. So he chops that shit in half. Next thing you know... This really upsets Joey, and Joey gets killed by Vic. Yeah, not even Jason. Jason's not the one who gets the first kill in this movie. 
what a great start. Vic is now in custody, and uh, the paramedics are there, the police are there. They're trying to ask uh, Matthew, you know, who can we contact? And then he's like, well, as far as I'm concerned, I don't know who to contact because his mom died when he was a baby or when he was born, and then his father already left, and then... His father never left? What kind of fucking bullshit is that? Yes, Roy. I know his father really never left. Can I fucking get to it? We see Joey under the sheet, you know, hacked to shit, his arms cut off, and uh, one of the paramedics is quite disturbed by this. He even looks at the camera, almost breaking the fourth wall, looking, you know, like he's uh, about to uh, get pretty pissed. And uh, I think we're going to find out why he is going to get pretty pissed and how pissed he actually gets after this. We meet now Vinny and Pete. Who are these two characters? Well, they just happen to be two greaser looking guys who just had their car break down in the middle of fucking nowhere in the middle of the woods. And uh, Pete wants to go take a shit while Vinny fixes the car. And then while Vinny is fixing the car after Pete has been roaming the woods getting scared by a bunny, uh, he hears a road flare go off behind him. He, think, he thinks it's fucking Pete and it's not. It's some faceless character, and then uh, he gets the road flare right into his fucking mouth. That's a pretty decent kill. I mean, a painful fucking kill, I have to say. And, uh, you know, Pete comes back after his shit or his piss, whatever. He's singing along to a song while kind of making his own little remix to it, you know, telling Vinny, you better start that fucking car, you piece of shit. I'm going to kick your ass. And then he finally gets the car started. He's like, all right, let's go. And then his head goes back. Slit throat. Yeah, so obviously the road flare kill is obviously the better of the two, but yeah, now we got three dead bodies on the kill count so far, and we still haven't seen Jason yet. Throughout the whole entire movie, we are treated to Tommy pretty much having voices in his head, replaying what his sister Trish was saying to him as he was chopping up Jason, and then we do see that he has visions of Jason. He is popping pills. He cannot cope with this obviously he's a very quiet person he's so traumatized by the events of what happened in the end of part four and to the point where we end up finding out there's a nice little character development with his character and uh he now is a badass when it comes to fighting because a guy pranks him with one of his own masks first of all he went to his room to take his mask and try to scare him okay you're an asshole and, uh, you know, he's punching him in the chest, you know, like, hey, don't you have a good fucking sense of humor? And, you know, Tommy just picks him up and slams him through a fucking table, WWE style, and starts pummeling him, just beating the shit out of him. Uh, he is restrained by Matthew, of all people, and uh, it's like, it's like, oh shit, Tommy can fight. He's a bad motherfucker in this movie. I really hope there's a good showdown with him and Jason in this movie. I mean, they just hinted at it, right? Right? Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. It happens. You just gotta keep watching the movie and, uh, you'll see it. Oh, well, I like your enthusiasm. Okay, I'm excited to actually see this fight between you and Tommy. Anywho, we come back to seeing, uh, Ethel and Junior. She's making her stew. He's eating some of that stew. Uh, someone comes knocking at her, her door or walking by her yard or whatever, so she grabs her shotgun, and she's about to investigate who the fuck this person is, and we're probably thinking, okay, it's probably Jason. But no, actually, it turns out some random fucking guy who, again, another random fucking person just shows up in this movie. Like, who the fuck are you? And it, it literally, she even says it for the whole entire audience. Who the fuck are you, and what the fuck do you want? <laughs> I can't even fucking say that line without fucking laughing, because... You know, doesn't that kind of associate with, um, you know, whenever you get a random text from some random number you don't even fucking know? Who the fuck are you and what the fuck do you want? Or when some random car drives into our driveway? Who the fuck are you and what the fuck do you want? Anyways, the police end up finding the two greaser guys and now even the sheriff's a little concerned. like, what the fuck is going on here? I mean... We had the killing at the Pinehurst. Now we have these two killings and within a day. What the fuck is going on here? Well, I know what's going on. 
Yes, Roy, I'm gonna find out soon enough! We are now at a diner where uh, one of the guys who transported Tommy to uh, Pinehurst, he's there to pick up a chick named Lana, who I uh, guess he wants to party and, you know, get his dick wet with, you know? And then, uh, of course, we have to fucking see her go to the bathroom, flash her fucking tits. This movie really does prove that a porn director totally fucking made this movie. Anywho, so while she's doing that and getting all freshened up, uh, he's sitting in his fucking car doing a line of coke. Um, and then waiting very impatiently, and next thing you know, he's getting so fucking impatient, he gets the fuck out of the car, starts shouting for Lana, like, where the fuck are you? And then gets an axe, right to the fucking dome. Holy shit. She finally comes right out of the fucking goddamn diner after a cat scares her, goes into his car, uh, you know, sees that his drugs is laying all over the place, and then, uh, she goes down and pick it up and you know, give it a little taste and whatnot. And then she looks outside the door and sees feet and a bloody axe. And then she does this thing where she is trying to exit the car. I don't remember her locking the door. But for some fucking reason, she's having fucking troubles with that goddamn door. I mean, like she's fucking... <laughs> for fuck! Like... Damn, lady, like, fucking just open the goddamn... Yeah, your hair color totally suits your fucking smarts, that's for damn sure. And then next thing you know, she finally gets out of the fucking car and... Gets the axe right into her fucking stomach. After another flashback episode with Tommy, we see the two horn dogs who are, you know, about to go run into the woods and fuck. And this girl, you know, she got big tits or whatever, but I mean... Their fucking last probably about like 30 fucking seconds about there. It feels like that. But anyways, the guy who was at Ethel's farm who won a darn meal, um, he's spying on them. Just real creepy shit, right? Next thing you know, he gets stabbed with a, a branch or some bark or some... I don't know. I've tried freeze framing this. Left, right, and fucking center every single damn time. And I keep thinking like, is it a knife? Is it like a machete? What the fuck is this? And then it just looks like a big wooden piece of wood. And I'm like, what? That fucking killed him? Anywho, it, they're, after their sex, um, he goes to the lake to wash up. And she's just laying there. Tits out, everything like that. You know, just, you know, she you know, got fucked pretty good, I guess. And then she opens her eyes. And then next thing you know, shears just goes right down into her fucking skull. And even like, you know... Like, oh, fuck. You, like, I was, like, even as a kid when I watched that, I was like, I wanted to see the aftermath of that. Hoping there was an aftermath. I wanted to see what fucking happened. Like, did she get her head cut off? Did she get stabbed in the head? I want to know. So, the funny thing is, is that actually she screams, and then he's in a lake, and if you see the scene where he's walking, he's fucking walking back to their little site where the blanket's laid out, he didn't go too far. How the fuck did he not hear her scream? Doesn't really matter because he gets so frightened after seeing her body. Yeah, her eyes got fucking gouged and, you know, you find out that, yeah, that's, that shit happened. He backs into a tree where a leather strap ends up going around his eyes and is being, you know, twisted and turned and is tightening on his skull. You can see that it's cracking under the pressure of this strap and it's a gnarly fucking kill. Like, it... It's such a fucking gnarly kill. It's definitely one of my favorite kills. Even though, like, there's that one point where he's going this way. He's going this way, and all of a sudden, this way. Now he's tightening it, it snaps. And I'm like, isn't that loosening it? How did it fucking snap like that? Like, I'm sorry. Logic right there made no fucking sense. But yeah, still, pretty damn good kill. Especially these two kills. These are very good fucking kills. We then get into this subplot with Reggie where he wants to go see his brother Demon and Pam and Tommy go with him and then they do this one scene where they're driving in the van and it just looks like it's a repeated scene. I mean like the van goes left to right like five fucking times. Like that's all you see is the van going this way and this way and this way. Yeah, great directing. For sure. Great cinematography. For sure. 
they get to fucking this trailer park where I guess Demon lives in a fucking van, I guess, and then uh, with his girlfriend. And they're just visiting. Tommy kind of goes over to the neon sign and he is disturbed by uh, Junior who is riding by on his dirt bike and uh, Junior is making fun of him. And then, again, Tommy beats the shit out of that guy, too. Like, he, like, full-on, like, Chuck Norris is his ass. Like, I mean, he's kicking him. He's fucking full-on beating the crap out of him. And right when he's about to hit the final blow, Pam stops it. So he, they're really insinuating that he's going to fight Jason. Remember this, guys. He's going to fight Jason. I promise you, he's going to fight him. That's why they introduced this fighting skill. After Tommy runs away, Pam tells Reggie that, yeah, we gotta go get him. And then uh, they go off and try to find Tommy while Demon and his girlfriend, Nina, yeah, Nina, um, they're about to smoke a joint, but those damn fucking enchiladas is backing up his system and he has to take a shit. Where we get this kind of nice scene where her and him are kind of like singing. He's She's fucking with him, like shaking the outhouse, and he's like, oh, you're gonna get it, bitch. And she's like, oh, you f you'll feel a lot better after you shit. Like, it kind of reminds me of me and my fiance. We like to fuck with each other a lot, a lot of the times. Um, like, you know, she'll scare me or whatever or try to fuck with me. And I'll do the same thing with her. And it, whenever she tries to scare me, I'll be like, you know, you're going to fucking get it, bitch. <laughs> you know, whatever. But anywho, they're singing, you know, like, ooh, baby. Ooh, baby. Like, they're singing. It's like, oh, okay. And then all of a sudden, you hear her gasp. I don't know where. And then it's like, wait, what? And then all of a sudden, the outhouse starts shaking violently. And he's like, okay, that's it. His, his shit's done. He's like, you know what? Fuck. You're going to get it, bitch. He opens the fucking... Or tries to open the door to find Nina's dead body. Throat slit and all is laying right fucking there. And he's like, oh, fuck. And then all of a sudden... The walls of this outhouse are getting punctured by this big sharp rod, and then at one point it stabs him in the fucking knee, and it, like, ouch, that fucking must have goddamn hurt. Then all of a sudden, he's backed up against the wall, which kind of bothered me, because I'm like, why are you backed up against the wall? He could, he could possibly fucking penetrate you with that fucking, th and then it happens. He gets stabbed with the rod, and it's like, why didn't you just duck down? The fuck, demon? The fuck? Pam and Reggie make it back to Pinehurst. Tommy's not there, but we see Jacob, Robin, Violet, and, you know, they're even wondering where's Grandpa. Oh, by the way, Grandpa is Reggie's grandpa. And Matthew's gone, too. So Tommy's missing, Grandpa's missing, and Matthew's missing. So Pam is now going to go find Tommy and possibly try and find the other two. So he leaves. she leaves Jacob in charge. And to watch over the house and, you know, even tells Reggie, like, you better be asleep when I get back. So she leaves and they do this crash zoom thing where you can actually see the actor who's playing Reggie. The closer the camera gets, he's like. Like, it's about to get to his face. He's about to fucking laugh. Kind of almost ruins it, ruins the suspense of it. But. Yeah. Yeah. Junior ends up riding back all the way home to his mom, crying like a little bitch because he got his ass kicked. And, you know, he's just driving around in a fucking circle on his dirt bike. And, yeah, I understand that. That's what say. Get off that fucking bike. Like, yeah, I would pretty be pissed off, too. Anywho, as soon as he's riding around the whole entire house, he's about to pass through this tree. A fucking cleaver comes out from behind the fucking tree and cuts his fucking head off. Another sick kill. Pretty damn good kill, too. Like, out of nowhere, just gets his head cut off. I mean, I know we've seen it in Silent Night, Deadly Night, when the guy goes sledding, but, you know, for that, it's actually pretty fucking good. But Ethel's death is actually one of the weaker ones, because she's just sitting there making her fucking stew, and all of a sudden a cleaver right through the window, gets her in the face, and her face just, you know, into the stew. Like, really? We don't even get to see it? That fucking sucks. Well, at least now she can call it Ethel Stew. Oh, God, that was bad. You should be ashamed of yourself. That was a fucking bad joke. Jacob and Robin are watching this black and white movie, and I'm going to safely assume that 
Jacob has kind of a crush on Rob, and I mean, like, he's like, we've been living in this house for a couple months now, eight months, I think he says, and she's like, she's more invested in the movie than he is, he's more invested in, uh, in getting his dick wet, and um, I should also, I forgot to mention this, Joey stutters, yeah, he stutters, um, and uh, next thing you know, he's about to ask her, but he can't quite get it out. So instead of saying like, hey, would you like to, you know, have sex? This is how he, pr he fucking delivers it. I want to make love to you. I get he has a stutter. But you can tell he's shy as fuck to even ask such a question. I mean, he built the courage to finally say it, finally ask that question. Very blunt question, too. I mean, it's the 80s. I'm going to assume that was normal. Maybe not normal. I don't fucking know. But she turns around and laughs at him. Like, did you have to be a bitch? Really? He, you don't know, really wanted to ask you that fucking question. You turn around and do that? Yeah, you deserve to fucking die. And yeah, he straight up gets pissed off with these. Like, I didn't mean it. And then, you know, leaves, you know, fucks off. And now she's feeling shit. It's like, yeah, you should feel like shit. He runs upstairs and he's going to go talk to Violet, who her most famous quote in this whole entire movie is, huh? Because she's got headphones in her ears and she's always listening to her music full blast. So every time someone's talking to her, she's like, huh? You know, yeah, that's one of those, one of those characters. And he wants to talk to her and she's like, huh? <laughs> and then he, like, he's getting nowhere with her. He, he's not getting laid. He can't have a conversation with Violet. Well, fuck, I might as well go to bed. Too bad you're going to get a cleaver to the fucking face because, yeah, Jason's in the house and he gets a cleaver right to the fucking face, killing him instantaneously. Robin's movie is over and she's about to put Reggie to bed, but Reggie's passed on the couch and, you know, I have a daughter, you know, sometimes that's hard to do with a kid, especially when they don't want to fucking move and it's like, oh, all right, you go put the blanket on or whatever. Um, So she's about to go to bed and, of course, topless... Oh, by the way, this movie was directed by a porn uh, a porn director. Yeah. Speaks volumes. Anywho, so she's now starting to feel a little guilty. She's going to bed, and there's the scene that just comes up that makes no fucking sense to me. So she's going up the ladder to the bunk bed, and you see stuffed animals, like, on the wall side of the bed. And she lays on the bed, and then some lightning hits, and, you know, next thing you know, she's like, yeah. So she turns around. And then she opens her eyes and Joey is facing her. Or not Joey, Jacob. Jacob is facing her. Like, dead. You can see the cleaver mark on his face. And it's like, fucker, we didn't even see you up there. How the fuck did you show up there? More teleportation when it comes to this fucking franchise. Anywho, she is about to fucking leave when next thing you know, a hand comes out of the fucking underneath her. And a machete goes through the mattress through her, killing her. This is now the third time we've seen a kill. Like Violet is in her room, robot dancing. Yeah, robot dancing. What does this have to do with the movie? It doesn't fucking matter. Her whole character arc was essentially, she was just listening to music, more tuned into that, and tuned out to the world, and her famous line is, huh? Whatever. Anyways, so we get this, I guess, suspenseful fucking scene where she's dancing and Jason's in the room and he's walking towards her and then all of a sudden he just grabs her by the throat after she turns around, slams her to the wall and stabs her. How fucking original. Reggie wakes up in the middle of the night and he's about to go back to his room but he wants to see if Tommy's home and so he goes into Tommy's room. Lightning hits and flashes through the, wall, the whole entire room and we see the dead bodies of Robin, Jacob, and Violet in his bed. So he backs out of there, he's scared of shit, and then, oh, Pam, I guess, happened to show up again. Oh, I forgot to mention her truck broke down. She had to walk back. Anywho, it doesn't fucking matter. Um, she goes and investigates the room and then sees the lightning flashing through the whole room, and then all of a sudden, she sees the bodies, and she actually does the one smart thing, which is she fucking gets the fuck out of there. And then now all of a sudden, you know, as soon as that scene it makes sense. It makes her smart as a character. It's fucking ruined because J Reggie just trips over fucking nothing and bangs his fucking knee. So now she's like, she's even, she's get up! And then all of a sudden, Jason crashes through the fucking door. This is finally the first time you get to see Jason in all of his glory. 
wearing overalls, wearing a different mask. What the fuck? Hey, don't look at me. They just handed me a hockey mask to wear, and that was it. I mean, the logic was there. Hockey mask. Yeah, Jason. Ah. Uh. They get the fuck out of there, and they're running through the woods. It's raining. They get, they see an ambulance vehicle in the distance. They go for help, but it happens to be the one blonde guy who was Roy's partner. Get, you know, body falls right out of the car. His throat slit. God damn, that's another throat slit. What the fuck? And then Jason just happens to just show up there. As I'm aware, I'm aware, they ran away from him. They get to the car. He's already there. Where the fuck is the logic there? Where is it? Reggie screams like a little bitch, and then sure enough, he does what anyone would fucking do. He gets the fuck out of there. He runs, leaving pretty much Pam by herself, you know, like, sorry, bitch, you're on your own, <laughs> you know? And she's trying to catch up to him, and, like, it, it's even funny, she, she's like, Reggie! And then she's, he's like, Pam, where are you? It's like, dude, you just ditched her. You fucking ditched her. Why are you asking that question? Anywho... She ends up running into a tree where we see Matthew pinned up to the tree where he has a, um, it's not a screw. I want to say it's one of those, um, bolts or pegs that hold railroad, railroad tracks down. It's one of those pegs because it's got that flat surface. Anywho, that's embedded into his fucking head and his throat slit too. Fuck. He really had a thing for slicing throats. She gets to the fucking house and then we... See Grandpa get thrown through the fucking window. Oh my god, I've seen this before. That's now, what, two fucking kills I've seen before now? Yeah, his eyes are gouged out too. So now that's another movie where someone has their eyes gouged out. Anyways, she fucking leaves. And then next thing you know, she sees Jason tailing her. She's running, he's walking. And then she does that one thing. I absolutely fucking hate in every one of these fucking movies, especially in horror in general, this dumb fucking cliche. Oh yeah, she trips and falls over nothing. Yes, she trips. Yeah, she trips. Fucking trips. And then starts to crawl. You're being chased by someone with a fucking machete. And you're going to fucking crawl? Get your ass up. Anywho, Jason catches up to her and sure as shit. He's about to fucking kill her. Next thing you know, Reggie to the rescue with a fucking tractor. Runs Jason over. He goes fucking flying a good 5-10 feet. Um, and they do another thing that is stupid. They inspect him to make sure he's dead. Yeah, he's not. Jump scare, grabs Reggie's ankle, they kick his head, and they retreat into the barn. Jason finally gets his fucking ass up and makes his way into the barn looking for Reggie and Pam. When he does find Pam, Pam has equipped herself with a chainsaw. So now we have this battle between chainsaw and machete, and she does land a blow on him, slashing him right into the fucking shoulder. Next thing you know, the chainsaw dies. Because of course it fucking did. And then, of course, now Jason kind of has the upper hand here, and he's about to slash her. He, she throws the fucking chainsaw right at him, scares him off, and then we see Tommy. Tommy makes his way into the barn. They call for his name, and Jason looks over at him, and Tommy is like, Oh my god. It's Jason. He doesn't really fucking say that, but I mean, like, you get it. Like, he sees Jason for the very first time since he was a little kid. This is where we finally get that epic battle between Jason and Tommy. And Jason's walking towards him. And Tommy's just hallucinating, hearing the voices in his head. And he's like, Jason. Jason. And Jason's getting closer. And it's like, okay, Tommy, we'll fucking get to it. Come on, man. Whoop his ass. And he's getting closer and closer and closer and closer. Until finally, Tommy is still fucking hallucinating. And then all of a sudden gets slashed right in the fucking chest. Okay, and then all of a sudden, he's about to stab him, and then next thing you know, Tommy pulls out his 
trusty knife and stabs him right in the thigh. Ouch. And retreats up the top of the barn. And, uh, yeah. There's their battle. You're a fucking filthy liar. Hey, don't blame me. He was just fucking standing there. I mean, fuck, what did you expect me to do? Sit there and drop my machete and be like, Alright, let's duke it out. I didn't expect him to just fucking stand there. Oh, fuck horse shit. Yeah, so, so much for showing Tommy's incredible fighting skills when you don't have any use for it whatsoever. I mean, like, the fact that he just gets slashed and that's it. Battle's over. By the time Jason gets up to the fucking ladder and gets to the top of the barn... Tommy's just laying there fucking, I guess, dead? Wow. So much for that. Reggie's is just hiding from Jason and whatnot. And Jason's still looking for him. Next thing you know, he sees him and then Pam hits him with an axe handle. Now we have another epic battle between a machete and an axe handle. This does not sound too epic whatsoever. Anywho, yeah, the axe handle doesn't really fucking win at all. I, that's 0 for 2 for Pam, I guess. And she's trying to dodge him and also at the same time not fall out of the barn onto these spikes. And then Reggie just cross bodies him or drop kicks him. And it's presumed that Jason has fallen over the, uh, the barn and into the spikes. Next thing you know, they go and investigate. Nope. He, nope. No, he popped up, grabbed his ankle. Now it's a tug-of-war match between Pam and Jason over Reggie. And that's when Tommy wakes his fucking ass up. It's like, oh, I guess he's not fucking dead. The machete just happens to fucking be there. And Tommy comes over and chops his fucking hand and Jason falls. In the midst of that fall, Jason's mask flies right off. I don't know how that happened. I'm gonna assume they just kind of kicked his fucking head and he fell. Then hit the bed of spikes so... We see that they're looking over at what has happened, his dead body, and they see the mask has fallen off. And this is where we get the final fucking reveal. Here comes the plot fucking twist. It's not Jason. It's Roy fucking Burns. The paramedic. Yeah. You know. Because that's what the fans fucking wanted. But that's a brilliant twist. Why wouldn't the fans want that? Because, Roy, the movie's called Friday the 13th. People are expecting to see Jason. Not some copycat who grabbed a hockey mask. Yeah, it just proves that anyone can be a serial killer. Anyone could dress up like Jason. Come on, the fans didn't want to just see the same fucking person over and over and over again. Killing left, right, and center in so many different movies. I mean, come on. Fans would love that. Oh, you think the audience loved that? No, 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 no. No, see, the audience did not fucking love that at all. When they finally found out the twist on that, and what the fuck, why is it the paramedic, and then you find out Roy Burns happens to be Joey's fucking father, and after he saw Joey's body, he snapped and became fucking Jason. He had an alibi, he saw all these crystal lake uh, newspaper clippings and this killer named Jason and whatnot. So he decided to, oh, that's going to be my fucking M.O. I'm just going to dress up like Jason. So, yeah, no, the fans didn't really fucking like that, Roy, at all. Pam, Reggie, and Tommy are now at the hospital. And, yeah, of course, the police had to explain the whole backstory with fucking Roy. Who gives a fucking fuck? Anywho, Tommy, uh, Pam goes in and sees Tommy and... Tommy, Reggie, and Pam are now in the hospital. The police had to uh, explain Roy's motive and whatnot. And uh, Pam goes and sees Tommy, who is recovering. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, pa fucking Pam, Reggie, and Tommy are now at the hospital after the police show up there and get give fucking... Roy Burns' his goddamn backstory. I didn't know this was a fucking Scooby-Doo fucking, you know, cartoon episode. I didn't fucking know that. Live feature with... Mm. Police take Tom... Mm. The police take Tommy and... Mm. 
The police take Tommy, Reggie, and Pam to the hospital, where that's where you get your explanation as to why Roy Burns did it. Yeah, because, you know, we really needed a Friday the 13th movie to feel more like a fucking Scooby-Doo episode. It was nothing like a Scooby-Doo episode. Although, I must say, I would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for that meddling kid Reggie and that bitch Pam. Did you just have to fucking say that? Pam goes into Tommy's room to see if he's okay and whatnot, and then all of a sudden, Tommy pulls out a fucking machete out of nowhere, stabs Pam, starts laughing like he thinks he's the fucking Joker. And it's a dream. Yeah. Damn, Tommy really, really loves having hallucinations in his head, uh, hearing voices in his head, and having messed up fucking dreams where either... He's going to be killed, or he becomes the fucking killer. And then a scene that makes no fucking sense to me. I mean, he he wakes up from the nightmare, whatever, and then he hallucinates Jason at the foot of his bed. You know, the real fucking Jason. Um, and he kind of stares at him, like, you know, like, hmm, okay. And then, like, Jason fades away, and then all of a sudden, Tommy gets up, opens a fucking drawer, and the goddamn blue chevron mask is in there. Like, okay, so wait, police did not confiscate that? That's not in an evidence bag? At all? He has it. What? Pam ends up showing up to the room in real life, not a fucking dream. Here's a crash, uh, opens the fucking door, sees that the window's broken. Tommy's behind her, shuts the door, has the mask on, and then has a kitchen knife. Because hospitals have kitchen knives now. And yeah, fades to black. And then the movie ends. And that is the review for Friday the 13th, Part 5, A New Beginning. Oh. Wow. I really enjoyed sitting down for this one. Well, from the sounds of it, you didn't really like it. But I'll have to ask, what are your thoughts on my movie? Well, I'm going to tell you my thoughts, Roy. The movie obviously had a good concept. I mean, it's it's a whodunit in a way, back to what the original Friday the 13th had. But, of course, when you have 2, 3, and 4 have Jason in it, it kind of makes the audience think we're going to see another Jason movie. It's just Friday the 13th. It's called Friday the 13th. Hell, the movie takes place in a whole span of what seems to be four fucking days. So there's no way it's Friday the 13th, not alone... They don't even mention what the date is, so you don't even fucking know if it's actually Friday the 13th at all. And then, of course, with this stupid fucking bullshit of, you know, oh, who's the killer? Who could have done it? And then everyone expecting it's going to be Jason, just to find out it's a paramedic who snapped because he saw his dead fucking son. Yeah, no one was fucking happy about this at all. No one fucking was. Personally, when I was a kid and I saw this fucking movie... I didn't understand it. I didn't fucking get it. And then finally growing up as an adult, it was like, wait, what? And now, given this movie a rewatch, yeah, I understand, like, there's a lot of people out there who now like this movie. The worst part about this movie is that it's not Jason. How many fucking people who do a Jason kill count count this movie? Because theoretically, you shouldn't. It's not a Jason movie. It's a fucking copycat movie. So... The 22 fucking, or 20 plus kills that happens in this fucking movie don't fucking count. Because it's not Jason killing them. Sure, it'll count as a Friday the 13th body count, but it's not going to count as a Jason Voorhees body count. The story makes no fucking sense. Um, there's a lot of useless fucking characters. Some dumb fucking decisions are made in this movie. You have... A setup for Tommy to be this badass, and then you lead it to fucking nowhere. Um, and then, of course, the twist is just... Yeah, it's a dumb fucking twist. This is definitely going to be a 4.5 out of 10. I don't know about that. I think I should be getting a 5 or a 6 out of 10. Because, let's face it, I killed 20 plus people. That's at least worthy of a 5 or a 6 out of 10. Why are you even at my house? You're not even the real Jason. Like, where the fuck is the real Jason? I don't really know. Last time I heard, 
he was dead. I don't know where he is. For fuck's sakes. Just gonna have to go fucking find him myself, aren't I? Anyway, guys, that's it for me. Uh, if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content. Um, I do have the first four Friday the 13th uploaded and uh, ready to go for anyone to watch. And uh, the next time you see me with this series review, we will be going to talk about Friday the 13th, Part 6, Jason Lives. Until then, guys, this has been the Ginger Snaps here. My name is Steven, and I will check you guys out later.